King Solomon's Minds is an action adventure film that was released in 1985. And since its release, it's been notoriously coined as Discount Indiana Jones. Originally, it was a novel written by H. Ryder Haggard in 1885, and eventually it was made into several films ranging from 1937 all the way to 2008. They had so much hope for this franchise, it's sad. Uh, the 1985 movie centers around the infamous explorer Alan Quatermain. Surprise! Great reflexes, boys. And his companion Jesse Huston. Hut, uh, Huston. Huston, yeah. As they attempt to locate Jesse's missing father in the midst of fierce natives and dangerous creatures that lurk around this mysterious jungle. Now let's just get this out of the way real quick. Um, this movie was complete garbage. It was a financial and critical flop. Actually, to my surprise, it made 15 million dollars. Um, I, I just assumed that it <laughs> made nothing. Um, yeah, Jesus. But has a special place in my heart. Aww. When I was like six years old, my grandmother put the 1985 version on the TV. I was just fully immersed into the, like, the world and the action. <laughs> and ever since then, I've just, you know, just it's always been in my mind, especially one scene. I, I decided that it was time for me to, to finally re-watch it after 11 years and see if it's as good as I remember it being. 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 The plot. Nobody is going into this film to explore the narrative by any means, and rightfully so. There isn't really much to say about the plot itself. It's more of an excuse just to plop the characters into an odd situation that they have to figure out. <laughs> yeah, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially for an action adventure film. But having a good story, oh my god! But having a good story with compelling conflicts and decisions for the characters to resolve goes a long way in order to make the audience enjoy the film. I had a brief explanation of the plot in the overview, so I don't really know what to say about it now. It it was serviceable forgettable and raunchy but that's pretty much all it needed to be the action oh this is the main meat of the film holy all right so at the time of watching the movie i had no idea that the budget of the film was 11 million dollars so i thought there'd be like minimal action you know just sprinkled around the place but then you see this gunfight with crazy plane sequence and these guys are like bang bang she just like ah! what 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 they didn't even i mean, just before that alan quatermain runs up to catch this train and then he goes under the train for some reason and this dumbass guy is following him but then his head almost gets smashed all right back to the plane they drop nukes on the bad guys like and, and Davy's character gets a mini gun out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, this is the scene. This is the one I've been waiting for. Eleven years. Oh, oh, it froze. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh yes, this is exactly what I remember watching. That was great. Okay, let's let's just put this into perspective for a sec. The movie just started 20 seconds ago, yeah. They're just talking about like ancient ruins and trying to decipher a language. Very basic stuff, you know. What? What? <laughs> and then that just happens. Just no setup for the trap just nothing and that perfectly encapsulates everything that this movie does like so well of, of course it's terrible but it's like perfectly terrible and that's pretty much all i got to say about the action acting slash characters okay this is the only category that surprised me the most in terms of actual enjoyment other than the scenarios and action of course oh my god 
Oh, of course, an ad straight after that. Okay? There were overall okay performances in this. Uh, most of them were extremely cartoonish or laughably bad. The brave joke! Well, I don't need to die with dignity! Ah! Uh, the actor that plays Alan Quatermain fits the role fairly well. He brings a nice sense of comedy and somewhat professionalism to the role. The actress that played Jessie is awful. She started off good in the first act, but I don't know what happened after that. She just got worse and worse. But the real shining performances in the film are John Rhys Davies and Herbert Loom. The characters just hate each other and it works really well when they're having a conversation because it seems like they're trying to outdo each other in all their cartoonish and infuriated performances. Conclusion King Solomon's Minds is a horribly flawed film, but it genuinely kept my interest the whole way through. The plot is garbage. The action is pretty good and the performances are probably the best part. I actually do recommend watching it. I've no clue where you can access it though. Um, the month it came out, it probably went straight to DVD, so I'd probably look there. There is, however, a sequel to this film. It has a long ass title, but if you want me to review it, then, you know, like the video. Alright, that's it. Off.